Welcome back. I've been speaking with Rajiv Jain, the promoter, the chairman and chief investment officer at GQG Partners, the fund that bought a whopping 15,446 crore rupees of Adani Group shares earlier this month. Uh, Rajiv, thank you very much for your patience. Now, uh, you know, that amount of buying actually makes you the second largest shareholder in some of the uh, Adani stocks other than the promoter. So, uh, do you have a dialogue with them? What do you uh, want from them? What do you ask them? Because, you know, of, there is a, clearly a perception issue. Uh, most of the Indian mutual funds don't own Adani shares except what they have to buy because uh, they are buying for index funds. So what would you uh, advise them to do so that they have wider, uh, you know, purchase wider funds? Yeah, so look, I think I think I think uh, it's not going to be the answer. Maybe you 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 you're looking uh, for, which is that we actually don't try to engage on a day-to-day -day basis too much, because okay. in this case uh, there are some optical stuff which we feel that can be cleared up. In fact, they are being cleared up as as we talk over, over the last you know last few months and years. So I think I think there's optical stuff and there's a substantive stuff. So from a substantive stuff, we feel that the reason why we are attracted to this group is their ability to execute very complex projects where in India there's a lot of headroom for it. That's what I call about TAM. I mean, I mean the privatization, there's still 25 plus airport, they'll be privatized over the next six many years. Who do you think is in, in a position to even have these? I mean, others have tried, they're, they're levered, they're just were not, they didn't turn, turn out to be competent. So our view is that they need to keep keep pushing for growth while managing the debt level, which I think, I think, I think they've already done that. I mean, they announced some of the shelving of the project, so on and so forth. So I think it'll be a little more manageable from, from the debt perspective, although we are not concerned as, 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 as the current point from a debt side. But I think the objective is to keep growing. Look, I think, I think it'll, it'll be a mistake to slow down to, to, get, to, to get the debt levels down. I think these businesses are supposed to be levered. That's the, that's, that's, that's the model. So debt has to be in, in, in a sort of mean, you know, in, in, in a measured way. However, our, our view is that don't change anything to please the markets. Because, okay. in fact, I'll tell you, even Reliance uh, and, and Berkshire Hathaway, for example. I mean, Berkshire Hathaway went up without many investors owning that for decades. I mean, you'll be surprised. Do you know how many in, in sell side analysts even cover Berkshire? I think there are two analysts cover it now. For first 20 odd years that I looked at the stock, there was no sell side coverage. No institutional investors want to own Berkshire Hathaway. So I think this is there's a lot of history. Uh, I can tell you Korean names that we own without any, uh, any sort of local institution support. Uh, so the question is, if they create value, the stock market will take, take care of itself. Okay. And and, no. and that's what the focus should be. Okay, fair point. Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, uh, just to uh, f uh, finish this conversation, did you approach them or did they approach you uh, beginning March? So so we, we had actually begun to do work, as, as, as I mentioned before in some of the other calls, that we actually wanted to see from a banking exposure perspective how exposed we are. Uh, we have looked at the name. We met the management last summer actually, when, when they were visiting New York. I mean, just regular roadshows. And, and, and as we did more work, we thought, huh, this is kind of interesting. Same time, Jeffries, Jeffries approached us. I mean, he, he happened to be here in South Florida. So, so we, we talked to him, and, and that, that's how the conversation started. And we kept doing the work. Bulk of the work we've done is actually not talking to the management, by the way. Uh, that's just not our style. We do talk to them, but our view is that management uh, can, 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 you know, can, can only tell you certain stuff. We have to make a sort of educated guess where the business is going to be five years out and do our own due diligence in terms of the allegations made now are, are legit or not. So it was a combination, but but there was no direct reaching out from them or anything like that. So it went through Jeffries. And but then we had asked also... them to set up a call with them. Okay, so you did speak to them. Sorry. You, you, did, you did speak to the management uh, before Just, you... Uh, sorry, you broke up for a second. Lata, what are you saying? No, no, no. I did, so you... You you approach them is what you're saying. No, the, 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 through the, through through Jeffries, yes. Okay, okay, all right. I I, I mean I just wanted to know, uh, you know, uh, what's what's the India bet is uh, now that there is a, a general risk off globally. Uh, are you 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 say you always buy in a crisis? Are you buying right now and in India? Yes, we are. Uh, in fact, we, 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 you know, we, we've been net buyers over the last X many days, weeks. I mean, after Adani, by the way, number of different things. So, look, I think I think there are a few aspects. First of all, the India bet is uh, kind of unique, and I feel that some of they're getting lost. It is not about buying consumer staples or IT services. Those are not really India bets anymore, in my opinion. They're 
perfectly good names, by the way, but not necessarily in the India bad. If you're an index hugger, you get paid to sort of mimic or you have, you can go massive underweight. I totally understand that. But we feel the real opportunity in India is the execution that you're seeing on the infrastructure side, that is the game changer in terms of what the implication, the multiplier effect that it has. It almost sounds very similar to what China was, I remember 20, 25 years ago. So that's, and by the way, these assets are utility assets. In fact, they're less to do with the India story in a way because they're utility assets. The GDP growth would not would not impact them. So, you know, in, a, in an ironic way, we're not making a bet on GDP growth, although I think I think it'll still be fine. But the real aspect versus a lot of things in Europe, um, and, and I'm talking as a global investor, which India is offering, is that interest rates are already high and inflation probably going to slow down over the next X many months and years, so on and so forth. There's no, there's no structure problem. Uh, second thing is credit demand is very, very robust, and we feel it will continue. The banking system is very, very clean. The third is that India is actually beneficiary of the geopolitical setup that is, which, which will help growth. But the most important one is the execution. If you look at, for example, road and railway construction now in India versus seven, eight years ago, is running at 5x, 5x versus what it was five, six years ago. Okay. If you look at, for example, the, the privatization, it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's begin to sort of take shape, which will matter because that'll improve efficiency. If you talk to corporates, this there's a general level of excitement. So we feel that India kind of stands out quite meaningfully versus not just other emerging markets, but even some of the other developed markets, especially in Europe. Okay, but what's your view actually on the ongoing uh, banking issues uh, in US and in Europe? Do you fear that in US it could balloon into some kind of a contagion? Are you, how are you looking at uh, risk assets, equities this year? So, uh, I mean, the, if you look at so, so far, and, and, and the problem is the banking systems, uh, the sentiment or the, con or the confidence can itself be, uh, could snowball, could be vicious cycle or virtuous cycle, depending where it goes. So if, if everybody believes there's a bank is going to, you know, is, is going to disappear, well, it could create a bank run and, and be a problem. For example, Credit Suisse, from a bay bottom of fundamental perspective, was not as poorly positioned, but you kind of have a banking run crisis because they were well capitalized. They raised capital just a few months ago, right? And this is a business where they do not have a non-performing loan problem. Uh, yeah. And they do have almost half a trillion dollar worth of um, uh, wealth management assets, which tend to be sticky assets, but now they've become leaky. So coming back to US, the problem so far is limited to um, uh, Silicon Valley um, connection. If you look at the amount of frothiness you had in tech space in 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 US and the rest of the world, uh, uh, frankly, I thought I used to think that some of these venture capital firms are delusional. Uh, so and and Silicon Valley Bank has a long history of bad behavior. I mean, 20 years ago, I remember that they had issues because it's very pro-cyclical, linked to bad behavior in Silicon Valley. And Signature Bank again was a try to be a big driver in crypto. Uh, First Republic again very focused on San Francisco. So it seems to be very localized problem emanating from tech rather than a broad-based system. So okay. to answer the so, question differently, no, we are not concerned about contagion risk. Okay. Uh, so this could be a, a still a good year for equities, you think? Uh, or do you think, you, if not uh, contagion, you would worry about recession risk? You know, if, if we're sitting at two months ago, I would be a lot more worried. We're actually getting less worried at the margin okay. because I do feel that this pretty much means that Fed would have a tough time raising rates. I think the inflation picture should improve on a go-forward basis. And as you know, we have an inflation bear. Uh, so I think I think at the margin, I believe the 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 outlook is beginning to improve, partially because those prices are down, partially because a lot of the things are sort of getting you know solved one way or the other. Um, and, and if you take a 12, 18, 24-month view, the outlook has begun to sort of improve at the margin. Obviously, you're going to look at the stock and sector and countries, so on and so forth, which may be different for different places. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for making us feel so good, uh, both uh, a reassuring voice about uh, the equity risk off we saw over the last few weeks and about, uh, uh, you know, the India story as well. You're sounding really positive. Uh, but, uh, I, I mean, you, you said that you are buying in India. What are you buying? Are you buying only utilities? Are you buying banks? What, right, at this point in time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a combination. So rather than saying what we are buying, I would rather say what we are not buying. Uh, uh, the, the big sector that we have, we, we, we have no interest in. I mean, ex, you know, I mean, staples, as you know. And by the way, uh, I we used to have like half of our global book in staples at one point. So I have a lot of sort of affinity with staples because, you know, we, we've actually done well in staples in the long run. So staples, uh, IT services, 
we do like banks a lot, both uh, public and private sector. Uh, uh, doesn't mean we're buying here and now, but we we actually like those. But I think I think those are the. It's interesting if you look at the large index components which are fairly widely owned by foreign investors and domestic investors, generally we are not finding much of interest there. Okay. All right. Well, let me end with this, uh, what, you, what you have told other media channels and us, that you buy into a crisis. You never waste a crisis. Okay. Uh, so which of your stock-wise risk bet didn't pay off? You, you, you pointed out that Infosys paid off, ITC paid off. Uh, so which didn't pay off? And would you admit that uh, the Adani stocks are about one of the risky bets that you have taken. You know, it's kind of interesting. I mean, there, there, there are a lot of names that haven't paid off, by the way. So, so I mean, oh. we can sit here for five days. I can, I can tell you every year that the <laughs> things don't pay off, right? So, so I think, I think, I think, I think that's 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 easy one. I mean, in fact, we used to own a lot of state-owned banks in the tw in twenty plus years ago, and some of them worked very well, some didn't, because we actually had to take a basket approach. I mean, from Jammu and Kashmir Bank on, uh, okay. so there was a basket approach. A lot of them worked very well, and and a bunch of them didn't work, by the way. So there's a there's a long list of them. I mean, if I remember the telecom space. Uh, in India, in the post GFC, we had a significant exposure, and the okay. regulatory sort of uncertainty, um, uh, you know, w w you know, was 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 created a, a situation where we actually had to cut loss and move on. Uh, this is 15 years ago, right? So, so yeah. the, 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 there's name after names that 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 haven't worked out. But I think I think Adani actually, I do not feel. Look, I mean, I'm sitting here and now, subject to change if, if data changes. We feel that these are still unique assets. I keep reminding everybody that. Yes. It is. It is not a service-oriented business where I I tell I tell you something. There's a regulator in between. There's somebody's getting yes. power, which is decided by a regulator. So so we we actually do not feel that as a very risky bet. And as I said, our typical style is no, we have a position. The risk could be political. The risk could be political. No, the risk could Sorry? be political. I mean, the risk could be political, isn't it? You must be seeing that uh, in in the Indian Parliament there is a demand for a joint parliamentary committee. So there is a political risk that you could be carrying. Uh, I, I, I'm not so sure because, frankly, a lot of the allegations being made are total fluff. I mean, I mean, the, the Indiberg report. I mean, if you go through the allegations and you check, verify one by one, the problem is most of the people are not doing that, right? So, a vast majority are really not substantive. Okay, fair enough. Okay, we will have to leave it at that because we are out of time, not out of questions. So, let me take a rain check from you for another uh, interview sometime soon. Thank you very much, Rajiv Jain, for spending time uh, at CNBC TV 18. It was great to be here. Thank you. Thanks. So, and with that, we wrap up this special edition of Newsmakers. Keep it with CNBC TV 18. There are more news and updates lined up for you.